it's draft day. You're listening to Locked On Canucks on draft day. All right, we got a bonus episode here. The final mock draft here. We're going to tell you who the Canucks are going to pick at 11th overall if Banksy was the GM. That's coming up next on Locked On Canucks. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy and welcome. It's draft day, baby. And you're listening to the final episode of Locked On Canucks before the NHL draft. I'm Trevor Beggs. And of course, I'm joined by Kyle Bowen. Now that guy right there, Kyle Bowen, he messaged me this morning and he said, Trevor, we got to do one final mock draft because in the Locked On mock draft, we had David Reinbacher going to the Canucks at 11th overall. I don't think either Kyle or I see that happening. So, Kyle, let's get into it, man. The final mock draft. Let's go, baby. Yes, yes, yes. My name is Kyle Bowen, and uh, let's just run through it, okay? No introductions. Let's not talk to the people. Let's just give them Let's just give them uh, th- these players, okay, and get to number 11, and let's see what Trevor's going to pick, okay? At number one, we got Chicago picking Connor Bedard. At number two, we got the Anaheim Ducks picking Adam Fintilli. Now, I'm hearing that they may not actually do that, okay? At number three, we got Leo Carlson. Yes, Leo Carlson. Let me get this damn toothpick out of my mouth, okay? We got number uh, we got number uh, three going to Columbus, and Leo Carlson is going there. Now, I'm also hearing that Columbus may be thinking about Will Smith. Is that true? Speaking of Will Smith, we got him going at number four to the San Jose Sharks. At number five, we have the Canadians. Look at the Canadians getting Matt Mitchkov. That is that is something else. At number six, we got the Coyotes, right? The Coyotes, the cream of the crop when we're talking about the National Hockey League. They're 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 reaching. They're taking Axel Sandin Palika, and that's uh that's more damage to an organization that doesn't really actually, you know, get get Arizona out of here, okay? At number seven, we got the Philadelphia Flyers picking Zach Benson. Yes, Zach Benson. Some people think they're gonna pick Ryan Leonard, but they're kind of reaching for one of the most skilled players in the draft this year, which is cool. At number eight, Washington, they, they obviously don't get Mitch Kov, but they like David Reinbacher, so they take him. At number nine, we got the Detroit Red Wings, the dangerous Red Wings, who pick Dal- Dalibor Dvorsky from, I'm not even going to say that. But anyways, they pick Dalibor, okay? Well, what a sick name. At number 10, the St. Louis Blues pick up Ryan Leonard, which leaves GM Ooh. Trevor Beggs. GM Trevor Beggs. He's walking up to the podium for your Vancouver Canucks, and he's picking who? Well, before we tell you who the Canucks are going to pick at 11th overall, we got to do this, okay? We got to give a shout out to FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting on MLB. We're talking to Brayden to talk about MLB. Kyle, what's going on, man? Dude, come anyways, on, man. If you're betting... Oh, man. But anyways, if you're betting on MLB, make sure you do it on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll add $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. How is it even possible? Ooh. Anyways, that's 200 You can spend on betting from anything, everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official, par- official partner of Major League Baseball. Uh, well, some options on the board for the Vancouver Canucks, including, you know, Oliver Moore, Nate Danielson, Tom Melander. But at 11th overall, the Canucks are picking the guy that I should have picked in the locked on NHL mock draft. They're picking six foot four left shot defenseman, Dmitry Sumashev. Beautiful, beautiful. And I, I, I'm liking that pick, okay? I'm liking that pick because we've seen the film, okay? Shout out to Faber, shout out to Daniel G. They put these highlight clips together. And this Simashev guy, he's looking, he's looking entertaining. Entertaining. And uh, I saw a comment earlier today on our show. You know, they're, they're, they're appreciating how much more I'm getting involved in, in the everyday 
uh, hockey rhetoric, you know? They're like, yo, Kyle, thanks so much. You know, thanks so much. I, we can tell you're studying, blah, 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 doing your thing. And I, I, I'm excited to, you know, show the people that, yo, uh, uh, this is just, this is not a new sport to me, okay? I, I grew up watching hockey every single day. There was nothing more that I was addicted to. There was nothing more than I wanted to do than talk about hockey as a professional, uh, as a career choice. And I'm just, you know, full circle moment. At 30 years old, back to this, and I, I'm warming up to the point. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel as if this dude, Simashev, and this is like an obscure uh, comparison and a, a really obscure comparison. But I'm going back to uh, when I was like last watching a lot of hockey. And that was around our Nux misconduct days. And uh, we were watching the St. Louis Blues win a Stanley Cup. And something about his film reminds me of not Alex Peter Angelo, but Colton Perenko. At like peak Colton Perenko. Like that run in the playoffs, he was looking really, 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 really good. And the Canucks need a really, 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 really good defenseman down the road to play. Maybe not beside Quinn Hughes all the time, but that number two pillar. And this guy looks exciting. Yeah, he does. And I think your Colton Perenko um, comparison is actually pretty strong because, you know, Simichev profiles as a guy who, yeah, he's got a bit of offensive pop in his game like Perenko does. But I think the combination that is really tantalizing with Simichev is the size with the skating, with a bit of that mead streak sprinkled in there as well. Um, honestly, I could see Simichev easily becoming the best defenseman from this draft. Ooh. And I know he's got a lot of helium on his name right now. Kemper Canucks, you know, not the biggest fan of Simichev. Ooh. But I, I've watched his tape versus uh, the other defensemen available in the first round of this draft, including guys like kind of Tanner Molenduk and Guliaev. Like I've, I've gone down the list, but I think Dmitry Simashev, he is he is the package here. And again, the Canucks don't need you know a point producing offensive dynamo on the back end. They need a physical, strong, mobile defenseman, and Simashev completely fits that bill. If Col- and I also don't think they're leaving a lot of value on the board either. That that okay. You know what? Great point. Great point. You know, f all the satire. I was gonna go there. Value, value, value at the 11th spot. Uh, based on my readings, what? He's the third defenseman off the board here, but I feel like there's a consensus that, you know, th- th- these guys, any any one of these guys could be the best defenseman in, in the draft. Maybe not Palika, but Reinbacher, Simashev, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, you need value, you need to hit there, and there's a good chance they do with this guy at 11. Uh, what was I going to say there? Oh, yeah, if, if Simashev is drafted by the Vancouver Canucks, and this is probably good for competition, right? If people... Uh, like to go that way with their lives like everything's a competition you know and a little bit of insecurities uh insecurity stems in your stomach when other people are doing similar things similar things to you in your craft and your profession but if Simashev, if Simashev gets drafted by the canucks i think kempner canucks kempner kempner canucks good dude he's gonna quit youtube man he's the, the way he's talking about Sim, yo he don't watch this shit coming the canucks you know what i'm saying Anyways, man, that was that was that was fun. We'll be back in a handful of hours. Trevor Beck's Kyle Bowen, Locked On Canucks, uh, just having some fun here. And uh, yo, one love to everyone, man. One love to everyone. Spread that love. Don't litter. Uh, your team every day. Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beck's. Sign us out. Yeah, that was uh, that was a fun little bonus episode here of Locked On Canucks. And if you missed yesterday's episode, speaking of fun, that was a lot of fun. Uh, how much realism? That's another question. But we went through three different trade scenarios, not just three trades, but three different trade scenarios for the Canucks with about nine or ten trades. So it was uh, it was a fun one, and we'll see what actually happens. Some of it was the Canucks trading down, some of it was the Canucks trading up. Uh, but if you want a good uh, episode to hype you up before the draft, before the Canucks inevitably disappoint you, go check out yesterday's episode of Locked On Canucks. But for now, I'm Trevor Beggs. That sexy beast over there is Kyle Bowen, and we'll be back here soon on Locked On Canucks.